This is 91.3 FM, WCW in Worcester, Massachusetts, the Dr. Chris Radio Horror Show. Tonight on the show, we will be uh, talking with a much beloved and uh, releasing his 14th studio album, uh, recording artist, musician, singer, guitarist, songwriter, uh, and probably a geek to heart as well, as most people know um, his music from the famous animated film Transformers the movie, but Stan Bush is on the show with us to talk about his 14th studio release, which is unbelievable. Thank you for coming on the show with us, Stan. Oh, hi. Thanks so much for having me. 14th album, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it a while. (laughs) That's, I mean, that's unbelievable. You have, you know, 14 different albums out. Is it, um... Is it an arduous journey to 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 keep creating new uh, and different music, or is it just you just got like a back catalog of stuff in your brain that you're just like, all right, time to write this? <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's it is kind of I have to push myself, I guess. It's uh, some people, I guess, maybe it just flows out of them, but uh, but yeah, I I try to keep keep uh, keep it new and keep the creative thing going. So, uh, but it's uh, it's gone real well. I. Um, I get inspired by you know the people and all that. Uh, been very uh, very fortunate in my career to meet a bunch of great uh, great folks along the way and uh, get uh, good responses from my songs and all that. So, I mean, it is it is definitely a year that uh, I said this. Uh, you know, I said this just to a friend of mine who's also a huge fan of yours. But I was like, you know, it, it, it's absolutely true. This is definitely a, the type of year. Where we need a little light to uh, a little a little a little bit of uh, touch and hope to light the darkest hour. Oh, that's nice to hear. Thank you. And it definitely feels like your songs, no matter what they are, you know what I mean. It could be anything more recently to something you know from over thirty years ago that it, it just definitely um, rings true to something of like you know pleasant pleasantness and hope and and things like that. Do you have you always felt like that about your music and your work? Well, it, it kind of started with The Touch, my song from the Transformers, from the original Transformers, the movie, back in 86, uh, seemed to, to kick off uh, that sort of vibe in, in a lot of the stuff. I kind of try to write stuff that's uplifting and has a, you know, a hope message, of go for it, believe in yourself, that kind of thing. It's, I don't know, it, it really is true, you know, we kind of make our own reality in a lot of ways. What were you doing before Transformers? Uh, basically, kind of blew you up. Well, I kind of uh, see. I had, I had done one album. Uh, my first album was on CBS, Columbia Records, at the time, um, and then that was in '82, I think it was. And then, uh, then I uh, afterwards got a, a deal with Scotty Brothers Epic, and that's the one that had the Transformers song, and uh, there was also a song in a, a movie called The Wraith with Charlie Sheen. Um, but yeah, that that was kind of the beginning of uh, you know some success. It, it seemed to do really well in Europe, so I did some stuff in Germany and, and England. So you know, it uh, from there it just progressed one from the next to the next, and <laughs> you know it, it's been great. It's been a right a nice ride. I've had uh, a lot of things in show, TV shows and movies and so forth too, and uh, um, you know video games and whatnot, and uh, it's did some commercials back in the back in the day also you know commercials like toyota <laughs> course beer. oh really wow well that's yeah. funny considering toyota's cars and you're synonymous with <laughs> you know automobiles <laughs> oh right right <laughs> do you ever is there any point you ever got tired of always being associated with transformers i mean was there ever like you know i've done more than that this is always who i am well, Has that ever crossed your mind? A, yeah, they have like one signature song or something, and they think, oh, I'll always be known as that guy, you know. But actually, I, I don't mind it at all. I'm very proud to be associated with, you know, Hasbro. They've been uh, great all, all through the years. Uh, performed at a, n- a number of the uh, conventions for Transformers, BotCon and whatnot. And uh, it's been, it's pretty cool in, in that world. And But yeah... It is that is the case. I mean, I did a lot of other things besides that. Not all the songs are about you know action kind of kind of stuff. I mean, the early Van Van Damme movies, the first two movies, Kickboxer and Bloodsport. um, I had songs in that as well. Of course, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Those are fantastic movies that I don't hear, I don't hear enough of. There's a couple great YouTube like retrospectives about Bloodsport or Kickboxer, which is fantastic, and they mention and Stan Bush did the music and you know has a song in there, and I'm just like, oh, that's really cool. I completely forgot about that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, that was pretty cool stuff. I I enjoyed those movies as well. Met him a couple times. Yeah, nice guy. Uh, you're talking about uh, John, uh Van Dam. Yeah. Yeah. The um, you, you should have gotten into uh, you know your 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 music your music probably could have elevated his uh uh the <laughs> most bizarre film Street Fighter the film the movie you know the one based on the video game. <laughs> oh yeah 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 uh, yeah no I uh, I'd definitely be open to doing something with him in the future if it ever comes to pass that'd be great yeah. whatever you know music video or a cameo or something you know. And you've done some interesting music videos before. Um, I've usually, again, see them associated usually like with Transformers. Like there was one for the War for Cybertron video game. There was a new song for that. Right. Um, that was really cool, you know. And it was all this, you know, it was the uh, the the computer animated style Transformers, not like the Bay film, but you know what I mean, like the video game style. And I was right. like, oh, that's so cool. He's got a new song out. That's fantastic. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool stuff. I. Uh... I, I love all that that stuff, and I've met some great people along the way. And of course, the the latest Transformers movie, uh, Bumblebee, used uh, a snippet of the touch, so which is that was really cool. So it was finally in one of the the big live action uh, cinema, you know, big big feature film. So that was great. Right, but the whole song is on their soundtrack, like the like a, it's kind of a new version of the touch, right? Um, I, I wasn't sure about that. I uh, I, I didn't know. Uh, Oh, oh! You're talking about my uh, uh, extra new, newer version of the song, right? Right. That I believe is on the Bumblebee yeah. soundtrack. The the updated version of the touch, like you could definitely tell, it's your more older voice compared to your younger voice from 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Uh, I I guess you did you see the music video recently from uh, the anime Netflix anime video? born to fight i had heard about it i haven't seen it yet and that's when i it was around that's when i um that's when i started researching find out that you had a new album dare to dream out with the the pie you know the giant clipper ship flying into the moon and i'm assuming maybe <laughs> you standing on the the steps of a i don't know a, a path to nowhere to a, i think i was supposed to be a teenage guy you know okay. but, but yeah, uh, <laughs> so he's he's dreaming, I guess, that floating ships and whatnot. But uh, but no, the Born to Fight is the opening track from the new album, and uh, it was like it came out a week and a half ago uh, on on YouTube. It's uh it's called Born to Fight, and uh, and it's uh, like I say, it's got footage of animation anime shows. The their two most popular uh, Netflix anime shows, uh, King and Ashura, Ashura. That's how you say it, and the other <laughs> one, is, uh, Baki. <laughs> So, I, yeah. uh, I that well that that the song I've heard I will have to watch the music video. Uh, we'll definitely uh, play that tonight alongside your, um, you know, alongside your interview that we're talking about right now. Great. Um, I appreciate so you, that. You you do you have any control in the design of the album covers? Because again, this one where the kid is standing and watching the ship fly into the sky. That actually that was my idea. Um, it just seemed seemed kind of cool to have a dreamscape kind of an image and uh i uh anyway uh but the artist who did it is really great he's in italy uh his name is nello delamo uh he, art for music he's he's a really killer um uh artist and uh he did my last four album covers so yeah he's he's great did you uh do you do any composing or do you do do is everything uh you have you is almost everything you do with uh, vocals, guitars, and stuff like that, or do you ever like compose music? Oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's all uh, both. I do um, sometimes I collaborate, uh, but I write a lot of the songs. Probably most of the songs on the album are are I wrote alone. Uh, the other the my main sort of other writing partner is Lenny Macaluso, who wrote the touch with me years ago. Lenny's great, so. Uh, as soon as this Netflix came deal came up uh, two or three months ago, I called up Lenny and said, "Hey, they, Netflix wants us to write a song." And <laughs> so we 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 immediately came up with this "Born to Fight," and it was great. So it came up 
they came out incredible. The the uh, track is the uh, like I say the opening track for the album and big a big powerful AOR tune and uh, Netflix loved it. So yeah, it's a uh, it worked out great. And it was the timing was perfect because the new album, like I say, just came out the day before yesterday, uh, Friday the twentieth. So it's a brand new release. Are you a big collector of anything in particular? Like, you obviously know Transformer fans collect toys and stuff like that. But is there anything in particular that you are a collector of? Are you a geek about anything? Oh, <laughs> I, you know what? I have a small house, and so I can't really collect anything. Um, I Good. Have one great, Keep it that way. <laughs> I've had for my whole life, just about 40, 40 years or something, had this really great uh, acoustic guitar. And, uh, that's, and I got a couple of electrics. But, yeah, I'm not really a a lot of guys who play guitar, you know, collect them, but I just don't have room. <laughs> that was going to be my next question is like, do you collect guitars being a, you know, musician? Uh, but as you said, you don't, what is there any, is there any time that you've uh, completely rewritten a song right from scratch because you just couldn't stand the way it was sounding in your head? Um, no, let's see. I generally, don't rewrite stuff it's uh i don't know for me i know a lot of people do that but when i hear a song and you get sort of used to it and get accustomed to how it goes then you know to totally rethink i mean we've rearranged songs but to totally rewrite a song i, I don't usually do that i'll just start a new one when you were taking time travel back to 1985 when they were making the movie um did you have any idea what uh what what type of toy property this was? I mean, had you ever heard of Diaclone from Japan or anything like that? No, no. I um, in fact, when I first started, you know, when Transformers reemerged as a phenomenon, and I guess it was the '90s, uh, we did the first sort of botcon type of thing. Beast Wars, in- yeah. 97, I think it was. Yeah, um, Beast Wars. I-, I didn't really know much about the the lore you know the stories the toy the toys or anything really and i've sort of learned as i went along what this is and that is and what this does and <laughs> that kind of thing so anyway but it's uh you know it's been a been a fun a fun ride you know the uh the people i've met are great you definitely seem to have a um small very small connection to horror in some way with things like neighbors to hell ninjas versus vampires you should explore more into the horror industry yeah that's funny you know those those uh those shows yeah that yeah that neighbors from hell i was trying to think of the name of that the other day it's a that was a funny show phantom of the mall i mean you got again you got this little touch get it (laughs) of horror in there and even like when optimus prime came back to life whatever there was like everyone was crazed out with with the you know uh the the rage virus and stuff like that they uh they needed the touch in order to unlock them but still that that, that's kind of like out of like if you've ever seen the movie 28 days later when that movie came out and people were getting a rage virus i was like oh this is like the return of optimus prime part two oh that's funny (laughs) yeah i was thinking about you know comparing like the optimus prime thing with uh like bambi you know the movie they bambi dies in the movie and you know all the kids are crying and everything you know it's it's a little bit like that with optimus prime too i think oh you mean uh, bambi's mom yeah there yeah was, yeah there was like a life lesson thing kind of like a moral uh uh you know i don't know optimus prime almost had like some type some type of a father figure image or something you know oh, pretty cool let, let me tell you i i have i have heard that before and i have witnessed people in front of me in line in front of peter cullen saying that to him yeah. uh at that botcon that i met you at in 19 uh sorry 2007 the, the rhode island comic con the rhode island i keep saying rhode island comic con uh you know what i mean the the rhode island uh uh whatever town hasbro's in providence yeah in, uh, providence yeah. right um uh, there was uh they had very few guests there there was you there was you know and there was peter cullen i think there was like one or one or two others the writers of the new transformers movie were there as well and I was like the second person in line with Peter Cullen, and somebody got down on his knees in front of Peter Cullen and started bawling their eyes out, talking about how Optimus Prime was a father's figure to him. And Peter is looking at, looks up at me, and I'm like, I don't know who he is. <laughs> so That's I've heard, so so I hear what you're saying, and I have seen that firsthand, and I've always been like, wow. That's great. 
Yeah, that was uh, Hascon uh, three or four years ago back at back at Providence, um, and uh, I performed at that. And backstage, um, let's see, uh, Mark Wahlberg had just done a uh, you know panel, and he was coming off the through the backstage area, and I was back there, and he was came walking by, and I, I said, "You got the touch." <laughs> he turns around and said, "How did I do?" <laughs> I said, "It was great." So anyway, a couple minutes later, he comes back over with his phone and and stands beside me and starts singing the touch. It was so funny. We're like two drunk guys, like singing, you got the touch. (laughs) It was hilarious. When he passed you the first time, did he know who you were and then come back over and then realize who you were? I I think he realized, yeah, once I said, you got the touch, he turned and saw me and he knew, yeah, he knew who I was. And it was pretty cool that uh, he didn't have to do that. You know, he, he put it on his Facebook page or something, you know had like 600,000 views within a couple <laughs> of hours. <laughs> that, was, that was cool. He said, the original, baby. So It's also great that you're able to put out new art material and new music in a, in a, during the pandemic, you know what I mean, whereas Hollywood is shut down, with yeah, the exception yeah. of whatever they've already got filmed or whatever they're, impor- whatever they're importing from overseas mm-hmm. or whatever they were – uh, about to release they just hurried up and put it out now instead of later you were able to yep. put out a new album and i think uh, i i think a lot of musicians are taking this opportunity to be able to put out you know new material right now in a, in a time that we're starved for new material yeah i you know i'd heard that too from a few other people that this pandemic period people being shut in for all that time has been a real creative time i bet you there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out right uh, i mean i i I took advantage of it myself. I did a Kickstarter recently, and we got we finished the Kickstarter today. We we were fully we were fully funded, uh, you know, weeks ago. But I launched a Kickstarter for a graphic novel. Nice, that's great. Yeah, and um, uh, we're gonna continue on to get it printed, and then we're gonna do an audiobook for it. So we're definitely not done with it yet. That's fun. The um, uh. You don't you you have in the new album title uh, the title of the the you know your your new work uh, Dare to Dream um, associated with like the dare being that also being a significant song from Transformers the movie. Yeah, I, I didn't actually put that together in my mind as far as you know going off of that word or something. It was. It was just seemed to really work with the theme. Um, like I had this music idea for the for the song "Dare to Dream" um, and the melody and everything, and it just totally fit. And of course, you know, you have the "Dare to Dream" D, the double D thing. You know, it's like a, a what do you call it? A poetic deal, right? Um, alliteration, I think. Um, anyway, uh, it just totally worked as the title, and uh, that song seemed like all of a sudden took on this like real special thing and i i thought well this seems like it should be the title track for the album and uh it just kind of came together but it's one of those things that just popped into my head it wasn't like uh something i thought a long time i think most songs are that way you know the at least the title it just kind of pops out how many different instruments can you play just guitar um i you know i fiddle around on the piano but uh i never really uh, got very good at doing anything on the piano so, uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, and mostly acoustic, uh, as far as writing to me, it just seems to work. Uh, I mean, I, I use electrics when I play live, but, uh, mostly just acoustic for, for songwriting. Out of all the, uh, conventions and, and, you know, festivals and, um, concerts you've ever done, what is the most unusual fan experience you've ever had? <laughs> well, you know, I had um, really cool reactions from fans. I mean, it's first of all, it's it's really humbling when you see these people, kids. Line, well, I say kids. A lot of them are kids. Some of them are young, younger adults. But lining up to to talk to me, it's it's very humbling. It's like I I didn't do anything but sing a few songs and and so forth. And it, it I don't know. I think you know what I mean. It's just I I'm I'm very gratified and appreciative and and all that. But uh, it just makes me feel really good that you know to be uh, able to bring some kind of joy to people, you know, with with my songs and things. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I had a cute little fan letter from a young a young boy, and he wrote, he said, "You're my biggest fan." 
<laughs> he got it turned around, you know. Ah, uh, no, yeah, it took me a second. Then I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I got fan letters from a lot of people over the years that said those songs that Touch and Dare had changed their life, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe they'd gone through something really tough and whatnot, and it uh, gave them sort of confidence or hope or whatever. And uh, I don't know. And at the end of the day, you know, that's what we're here to do, right? Kind of help each other and stuff. And it, it's, uh, I, again, I mean, I, it's humbling. You know? I, I think for the most part, being, uh, people need to try to be especially coming up in 2021 i mean this year has just been a yeah a blight and yeah. a lot of darkness for people so you but, know when you hear yeah. a song like the touch you feel so much better that there is some kind of hope you know what i mean and and, and not to get political and or anything like that but you know and just keeping it to like just the virus and the death toll you know a song like the touch can really be inspirational uh, for for so many people, and I know it, I know it has been for me. Um, oh, this great. graphic Thank novel you. I've worked on for four years has been up and down, and just constant starts and goes, and all sorts of problem. It, it, it's been a nightmare sometimes that I just said, "Frack it, I, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore." You know what I mean? And <laughs> this year oh, yeah. it just kind of came together, and the plan was set, and we were like, "Okay, we're gonna do this on Kickstarter." And I'm like, "Gosh darn it, I don't want to do that, but I guess I have to." And we did it, you know. We 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 hit our goal big time, you know. We over five hundred percent compassed our goal. So, and I was thinking about the touch when that when we were about the launch, um, and it and then this opportunity to talk with you about it afterwards. I was just like, well, this is just coincidence. Um, <laughs> I I got to live my dream. This guy has songs about dream the dream, and he you know all, none of his none of your songs are anything about anything bad. It's 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 always something inspirational. It's it's rock. It's poppy. You know, it's it's always very you know guitar heavy, which is fantastic. But there's nothing about your music that ever says to die, death, and destruction, and, and you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> write a song about killing cops. You know, it's like, no, yeah, it's not. It's things, not anything things. sad. Let's just say no. so. Uh, you know, it's like we need some positivity. You know? It's like, hey, um, but yeah, that. Thank you. That's. Uh, I appreciate that. And of course, we're in the middle of the holidays, and I didn't know this until I was preparing for this interview today. But of course, every freaking musician has one. You did a Christmas album. <laughs> Oh wait, yeah, back in the nineties, I did, I did one, and uh, yeah, it just you know some of the traditional songs. It's like it's, every, funny, it's funny to listen to it now, you know. Is that is that just what it is in the music world? You're you're you you have been putting out albums for as long as you have. You have to do a Christmas album at some point. Well, actually, the I had worked with. These, these guys in Germany were doing some stuff, management kind of stuff with me, and uh, they had, you know, funded it, and it was, um, it was a, you know, sort of a smaller budget production and what and whatnot, and they, they had the idea of, of making a Christmas CD and putting it in a Christmas card that, you know, would hold a CD, which I thought was kind of cool. So, okay. But yeah, I still have that, uh, you know, that recording, and... Uh, We'll but have no, to uh, we'll have to find that and play that for uh, Christmas coming up. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it's actually available anywhere, but uh, it's probably it, online somewhere. You can always find anything on the internet. Uh, yeah, maybe next year I'll dig it up or something. <laughs> what but, um, no, it's, it's, uh, you talk about one of the other cool songs on the record is uh, called the '80s. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Um, it came out over the summer. It's like a a song about '80s music. And uh, no, the last album I think I was aware of yours was uh, maybe five or so years ago. Yeah, yeah. The, anyway, we did a music video of the song, and it's called "The '80s," and uh, it's on the album too. So, so check it out. So, you "Born to Fight" and "The '80s." Those are the two big songs uh, that have you know gotten some some uh, video stuff going and uh, you know airplay and things. Well, well, absolutely. I I appreciate the recommendation. I was trying to go through your songs to figure out which ones to play. I was like, okay, so there's the ones everyone's familiar with, but I want to play something kind of new to me and new to other people, and uh, I appreciate those two recommendations. Stan, I so much appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, it has been, I, I have always, you, you have always been an inspiration for me um, with as being an artist, um, and thank you so much for continuing to do what you do. 
Uh, again, it was a great pleasure many, many years ago to meet you at Boston Comic-Con, and hopefully you can come back to the New England area once things have gotten better. I know Florida is... I've got a co-host for a podcast that lives in Florida, and she tells me it's 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 hell right now. So please be safe and oh, healthy. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, it's great to you know talk to you. And uh, also, I should say that you know if anybody wants to check out uh, StanBush dot com, so uh, yeah, little yeah, plug there. Go to StanBush dot com. You can find Stan on social media or on Twitter. I see uh, as well at the at Stan Bush. Awesome. You're right? Is that your Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Again, thank you, Stan. You have a happy holiday, a happy Thanksgiving till all are one. All right. You too, man. All the best. Thank you. Thanks. Stan, hold on. Wait, quick second.